and today we'll be installing Parrot OS, the security version, here in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 machine. First off, you'll want to make sure that you have Oracle's VirtualBox installed on your computer. You can get it at virtualbox.org if you don't have it already, and the installation is fairly simple. Once you have VirtualBox installed and you've launched it, you'll see a program similar to this here. Now, you might not have any machines, but we'll create our very first virtual machine by going to Tools, and clicking on new. We'll name this Parrot OS in order to install Parrot OS onto it. And for our type, we're going down to Linux and selecting Debian 64-bit since we'll be installing a 64-bit image of Parrot today. Parrot is a nice distribution that can help you with experimenting with tools for forensics, cybersecurity, ethical hacking, and much more. It's a fairly popular distribution amongst security experts and enthusiasts up there with the ranks of Kali Linux. And after you finish setting this up, you can hit next. Here we're asked how much memory do we want to allocate to our virtual machine. I'll allocate eight gigs here, but you can allocate whatever you need to. Try making sure it's over two gigs for this Linux distribution and don't go in the red zone or else you'll starve your own PC of memory. After you have this, you can hit next. Now we're being asked what we want to do about creating our virtual disk. I'll create a new virtual hard disk now and hit create, but VDI being native and defaulted is fine for me. I'm gonna hit next. On this screen, we're selecting between a dynamically allocated disk or a fixed size disk. In most cases, dynamically allocated works the best because then it doesn't take the full size that it needs for the disk. Instead, it dynamically grows on your system as the file system itself grows. So the default here is okay. I'll hit next. Now we get to set a size for this disk. I'm going to set a leak whenever I go under 32 gigs. It doesn't install properly. So today I'm going with 64 gigs. Don't worry about this taking up a full 64 gigs right away. This is really just the max limit since we defined this disk as dynamically allocated. Following that, we'll hit the create button, which will create our new virtual machine. And we can see now that it's populated on the left hand side. Before going into settings, we'll take a moment to download Parrot OS from their web. The options here are the Parrot Home Mate Desktop Edition, and we also have the KDE Edition as well. If you don't know the differences between these types of desktop environments, make sure to look it up for yourself so you know which one you like the most. By default, Mate is the one that Parrot supplies. And if we look here, we see another version of Parrot, which is the security version. And this is actually the one that we're most interested in since it comes with the security tools pre-built and available on this edition of Parrot OS. You also have the KDE security version and two home and security OVA files. So what these OVA files are is you can actually directly download these and directly import either of these two files inside your VirtualBox software and it will actually pull in a virtual machine right away. But we're going to actually create and install that virtual machine ourselves. So I'm going with the default Mate ISO here, the security version. I'll click on the direct download and my download will begin. Back in the virtual box and with the virtual machine selected that we've just created for Parrot OS, I'll right click and go to settings or you can go to the top and click settings as well, whichever way is easier for you. And we need to change a couple of the settings around in order to have Parrot OS run successfully here. The first thing I'll check and make sure that we have a type of Linux platform and a version of Debian 64-bit selected. And then we'll go over to system where we can change and check this box that says enable EFI. It says it's for special OS's only, but most systems nowadays actually run with EFI-based BIOS. So in order to emulate newer computers with newer firmware for BIOS, 
we need this box selected so it emulates EFI. I like to also deselect the floppy disk right here and move my order around. You don't necessarily have to do this, but there's no reason for the floppy to work if you're not gonna ever use it. In the processor tab, I like having two cores for my CPU. You can select however many you want. As you can tell, I can select up to 16 cores, but you wanna avoid the red zone because you might starve your own system of processing power. And again, this is really a representation of cores, not CPUs. Select a value that makes sense for you. In the display, I won't really change anything up. The next place I want to go to is the storage, where I'll click on this empty optical disk here, and there's currently no disk image file selected. So what I want to do is go to the right-hand side and then click on choose a disk file. In this dialog, for the virtual optical disk file, we're searching for the image that we just got downloading from the Parrot OS website. So we can see here in my downloads, I have Parrot Security for the AMD 64-bit architecture available. I'll click on that to select it and I'll hit open. That will load this image file into the emulated optical disk and now I can move on to some of the other settings. I like turning audio off so I disable the audio and finally in the user interface I usually like to turn off the show in full screen or seamless and then I hit OK. At this point we've set up our virtual machine and we're ready to install Parrot OS onto it. We can start the virtual machine by going up top and hitting start. You might get this screen if you've used VirtualBox before. Make sure to go through the list and actually select Parrot Security if you're getting this, and then you can hit the start button. If things start up right, you'll see a few options uh, just like they're labeled here. We have various different things to select, but what we want is the very first option. Let's press enter and get inside Parrot OS and let's start loading Parrot OS. All right, once the live environment has loaded up, you'll have some icons on the main screen and we want to go to the install Parrot icon, double click on that and let things load up. Here we'll be going through the install for Parrot OS. So the very first thing we're asked is, what type of language do we want to run the installer with? American English by default is fine for me. I'll hit next. Next, set your time zone accordingly. My region is in America and the zone for New York is great. You also have options to set the system language and the various different number date locales available. Mine's American English, so the default works as well. If you need to change any of those, you can go to the change button, click that, and change it over to your proper language. Then I'll hit next once I have those set. And here we put in our default keyboard layout. What's been detected for me is the English US default keyboard. If I just type something in like 40 and I get it out, I know that I have the proper keyboard selected because what I'm typing in is what I'm getting out. So I'm going to hit next once I've confirmed things. And in here, we're getting a few options, whether we want to manually partition this or erase the disk, which says this will delete all the data currently present on the selected storage device. This is the option we want since we are installing this on a virtual machine and there's currently nothing installed on this disk. It's a fresh virtual machine. There won't be any problems here. And the other thing I see here is this EFI, which is a good signification that our system is of an EFI-based BIOS firmware, which is great because then we get to emulate the newer EFI-based BIOS. In the selected storage device, we only have one available, or really there only should be one available, and it says it's the VBox hard disk which is the 64 gigabytes that we allocated before. You can select if you want some swap or not. You can have swap with hibernation or no hibernation. This just depends on how much space you have, you have available to allocate to this virtual machine. If you do want swap, you can select it 
and it will automatically make a suggestion for how much swap to make. If you choose without hibernation, it will actually allocate a little bit less, and with hibernation, you can see a little bit more. Since I'm not going to be using hibernation and I don't really need swap necessarily, I'll go with no swap here. And if you still haven't already, make sure to go down below and smash that like button for me. I won't encrypt my system. You can if you need to. Here I look at the bottom and the current disk is of course unpartitioned and it has nothing inside of it. And after it says we will have something, parrot of type BTRFS formatted and a FAT32 EFI system at the very beginning of the disk. This all looks correct so I can hit next and now I'm asked for my full name and the name of the computer. Next we need a password and then a second confirmation of that password. You can use the login automatically if you want to log in automatically to your desktop without entering a password. I don't suggest using this for security purposes. Then we're ready to hit the next button. We're given an overview of everything that we've selected and what changes are going to be made to this disk. I'm happy with all of this, so I'm ready to hit install. We're warned one last time that at this point we're writing to the disk and you can't change things back. Well, since we had nothing on the virtual disk that we created anyway, this shouldn't be a problem for you. Hit install now as long as you're going through the same process. Now we're going to give Parrot OS a few minutes to finish out its installation. We're getting really close to having Parrot OS available in VirtualBox on this Windows 10 machine. Again, you'll be able to use all those fabulous security tools through Parrot OS with your virtual machine. So let's let this finish up. And after it gets to the all done page, we're ready to restart now. It looks like everything's successfully installed. We can go down to the done button and hit that. Give it a few moments. The machine will shut down and you'll be able to run Parrot OS again. But it allows you to function just fine. We have a few selections here and we'll go with the first highlighted option, Parrot New Linux and grub and press enter so things load up real quick and now we're being welcomed by the greeter go ahead and type your password in for the user and give it a moment to start things up and if you went ahead and made it this far you've successfully installed parrot os inside a virtual box on a new virtual machine that you created which exists in a Windows 10 host. I know that's a mouthful but this is great. You are well on your way to being able to use Parrot OS now for Parrot OS since it is a Debian based distribution. Alright so if I just take a look around the desktop mainly we're interested in applications up here where you can go through the various different subcategories to figure out what applications you now have and you'll probably be mostly interested in the privacy and the pen testing. Here are all your tools for pen testing and underneath you have different subcategories. So let's just look at the most used tools. We have Arageddon, the Burp Suite, Go Buster, 
Kayak, and Wireshark all pre-installed for us with a bunch of other programs that are meant to be used for pen testing and just testing of general vulnerabilities in a network or system. And then you can actually drill down to even more specific programs and packages here if we just look through password attacks, wireless testing, sniffing and spoofing, digital forensics, reverse engineering, and much, much more. Parrot OS is a great security distribution with a ton of security tools to test with, just like Kali Linux, and is a great Debian-based distribution if that's something that you're interested in. And what better way than to just simply install a virtual machine without affecting your main machine here. You also have all the normal tools that you might need for productivity. So under Office, you have the LibreOffice Suite. You have quite a few browsers installed and ready to go on this Security Edition, including Firefox and the Tor web browser. For graphics, you have GIMP. In the sound and media, you have Cheese, as well as the VLC media player. If we go down to programming, we have various IDs available, with VS Codium probably being the most popular. There are a whole bunch of system tools as well, and the one thing you might want to switch up, if you actually go to the bottom, you can use the search bar. And if we just look for display, for our display settings, you might want to switch up the display setting currently set. So perhaps 1440 by 900 might work for you. At least make your display a little bigger so you can see things a little better if necessary. But you won't have the proper resolutions available to you until you've installed the guest editions. So scaling is a problem until, again, you've installed those guest editions. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below.